Folks, what's going on? Arm and Hammer here. The following is an interview with Sam Quant. Now, you may not be familiar with Sam Quant, and I don't blame you. The man flies under the radar, but he is obviously incredibly fit to have made it through to the finals of the 2020 CrossFit Games. And if you're looking for just a little bit of evidence about just how fit this man is, at his rookie appearance at the CrossFit Games, he won the DT event 2016 crushed it so yeah he's got a whole lot of fitness in this interview we got to meet his cute little baby son Layton we got to talk a little bit about how he always is a bit of an underdog his uh, experience over the stage one weekend of the 2020 games and what he's expecting to see with the finals I know you guys are going to enjoy it I'll see you very very soon take care Sam congratulations on uh, making it to the final five dude Hey, thanks. I appreciate it, man. Uh, you know, I think a lot of people aren't familiar with what you've got going on when it comes to being really good at, at exercise. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The dark horse for what? How many years now? Yeah. Four years. You've, you're <laughs> always kind of like the young, quiet, uh, in the shadows type guy. Uh, even your rookie year, you won an event. Like you won the mm-hmm. DT event your rookie year, which is very difficult to do. I mean, rookies don't win events at the CrossFit Games generally. And, yeah, especially uh, name workout like that. Especially, especially name workout like that. And so, you know, I think I think people maybe forget that you've already competed at the CrossFit Games three times. Is that correct? It's like this is your fourth yeah. year. Yeah, it's so, gonna be our fourth year. Uh, what What is it like? Just constantly coming from you know, the, the back, like people just not seeing you coming. What's that like? It's kind of weird. I think people always put me in the categories with like the rookies and stuff, which is, I mean, it's whatever. Cause I know I eventually will make a big splash, but it, it gets annoying to a point. Yeah. You know, do you, okay. This is going to be a weird question. Do you remember the first time we met? Was it in person? It was in person. What year? It was the last year in uh, Carson, so it must have been 16. Nope, I guess I don't. Uh, that's on me. <laughs> All right. Well, no, no, no. I'm actually really glad you don't remember because it's kind Uh-oh. of an embarrassing story for me. Uh, we were in, uh, we were in the warm up area, like the little like exercise area that's set up in the hotel. That okay. Little, that room, right? And it, there wasn't anybody there. I was there uh, talking to like Margot that year, or maybe someone else, or whatever. And um, I was just hanging around the the warm up area, waiting for somebody to come by. And you were there, I think, with your dad. I want to see your dad was there. Uh, Would you ask me if I was a teen athlete or something? No, man. It was. Re- okay. It was like it. So you came. You actually came up to me. You're like, "Hey, man, I'm Sam. Nice to meet you." And I was like, "Armin, uh-huh. nice to meet you too." And then we didn't like. I just assumed you were there working out, but weren't one of the games athletes. <laughs> and awesome. then, and then, uh, you know, I got proven really, really wrong, really, really quickly. So, you know, I guess, I guess, I kind of owe you an apology, but you don't remember. <laughs> so, I, you know, we're 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 even. <laughs> All right, yeah, apology accepted. Yeah, uh, I'm not holding that as a grudge. I wouldn't have accepted your um, interview then. Just oh, good. I good. still would have. <laughs> <laughs> so. This year, this year you uh, you become you have a, you have a you have a child you have a tiny little baby mm-hmm. a little yeah. a little human, and yeah, uh, there he is. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah buddy. See how long he lasts. <laughs> how uh, how has that affected your ability to sort of like train and get after it? Uh, honestly, not too much. Um, the stuff that it like would affect would be like my sleeping and stuff. Um, but he's he's been a pretty good sleeper, but. Anytime he's waking up at night, my wife is taking care of him. So, I mean, it's been a really a blessing with that. She kind of knows I need my sleep. So, uh, I mean, not too much. He's really good during the day when I do need to take care of him. Um, so he hasn't really been much of a burden at all. Every once in a while, a little stressful just because he cries. But, I mean, every baby does, and it's not, it's not every day. He doesn't have bad days very often. That's awesome. So that, that's, yeah. that's good to hear. You got, you got the, you got a lucky one. You got a good one. No, no returns yeah. on this one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know. Not returning this one at all. <laughs> uh, so, and you, and you train exclusively out of your garage. Is that right? Um, right now because of the virus. Yes. Um, but I would say maybe like one to three times a week, I would go train at a local gym that I have here. Um, but since the virus stuff going on, yeah, it's been 90% of the time 
at my at my parents shop yeah but it is nice to get in at a gym uh we, it's a local gym that i work at a little bit of it's called mallard crossfit and it's pretty fun yeah, it's it, nice to switch it up every once in a while <laughs> yeah did, did it did it kind of uh you know, cause I was talking to Noah about this a while back and he was saying how at first he just was lacking some equipment to train at, at his house and mm -hmm. eventually sort of put stuff together, like borrowing it or buying it when he could find it. You know, did you have any issues sort of putting together the facility you needed to train? Uh, not really too much. Um, it's funny. I honestly won a lot of my equipment at a uh, local, local competitions or like I would, I, I won like an Aerodyne. So I'd sell that and then buy an assault bike um but then like for in like 2014 i like bought a set of plates and a bar from rogue so i'm still using all the older stuff but i mean everything i have is I've just been accumulated over the years but never really like hurting for any equipment yeah luckily barbells aren't like iphones where a software update will completely nullify its, its usefulness <laughs> well yeah shoot right now i mean a lot of people that need home gyms i mean everything is sold out because everyone's buying all that stuff. So if, if you were kicked out of your gym and needed to train, dude, it would be hard to, because I mean, if you can't get equipment, that'd be super hard. Yeah. There's, I think there was like a five month period where just dumbbells Shoot. were sold out in the entirety of the United States. Like no one had dumbbells or kettlebells anywhere. I think it's still hard to get everything too, honestly. Yeah. As far as I can tell on a rogue site, when anything goes on sale, like anything that they have in stock, it's gone within a day or two. Like they just can't make it fast enough to keep up. Yeah. With I think I had, um, I wanted to get some like kettlebells and I was on like the waiting list and I saw I had an email from like, what, two hours ago or whatever. And then I went and looked, it sold out. I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> whatever. I'll wait another three months. You're like, you know what? I think, okay, fine. I'll get the 130 pound one and it's not available. Okay, right. fine. I'll get the 150 pound one and it's not available. All right. What, right. what is going to be happening? Yeah. Uh, Dude, yeah. No, thanks. I'll wait for the 53. <laughs> So let, let's talk a little bit about, about the, the back end of the season because you have, uh, like almost every other qualifier into the final five, you qualified for the games through the Open. So you've mm -hmm. known that you were competing for 10 months by the time mm -hmm. you showed up. Uh, yeah. There's a whole lot of shenanigans in the middle there between you know the sanctionals getting popped off and things started shutting down and you know, the questioning around whether the games were going to be in person or, or canceled or postponed or this. And we finally ended up getting, you know, to where we are now, where the stage one happened. What yeah. was, uh, what was it like when you finally got that sort of like, all right, thumbs up, green light. We're having really material conversations with CrossFit about the games are going to happen this is what you're going to need. Uh, here's a general schedule. Like, did you have this sense of relief that you could finally have something really specific they're trained towards or, or was it something different? Um, honestly, I mean, the whole time training for the games, I, they said originally, no matter what they were going to do something, whether it's online or not. So, I mean, my drive for that or passion for that never really changed. Um, when I saw that everything was starting to shut down in California again, I wasn't surprised at all when we heard, that it was going to be going online but i mean it definitely like impacted my training and kind of switched everything up i'm not training to go run up the hills in aromas anymore i'm training for open ish type workouts and stuff i had about i had a break from running for about a week until they said that we're going to be running so then we started running again <laughs> uh d did you did you have a, a good grasp of guessing what the workouts were going to look like before you sort of got an idea that week or were you just kind of like you know what open plus games ish we'll see what happens things that are heavy things that are familiar um we had a little bit of an idea not too much though we knew i mean we knew we weren't going to be doing like ring muscle ups because they didn't ask for it we knew we weren't going to be doing some d-ball type stuff so we definitely had a general idea of what we're going to be doing but other than that not really <laughs> Hey, Sorry kid. about that. What's uh? Wait, what's his name? Uh, Layton. Hey, Layton. Layton. He likes to look at himself, but he's not allowed to use media. But maybe for this interview, he'll be allowed to. Just All don't right. tell I, my wife. I won't tell. I won't tell your wife. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you know the the events. You know they get announced. The first day is like you know high power, real fast, real aggressive stuff. Um, mm -hmm. The second day is. The, the second day, I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but those second day workouts are the ones where I was uh, uh, 
most sort of like, yeah, Sam's going to crush these. Like seeing you climb oh. up the leaderboard that second day, I was like, this is a ladder for him. He's just going to walk oh. right up it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, when I saw the first day, I'm like, oh, dude, these – <laughs> these are not great for me um i mean it's definitely not a great attitude i mean i gave her on every workout um but yeah i saw the day one workouts and like ah none of these are good except i mean the front squat and i had no idea what to expect on that row i, I it's been years since i've done a 1k for time and i think my previous 1k was like a 308 or something like that so i was nervous about everything except that one the front squat for day one um but yeah i mean obviously Overall, I was happy where I was sitting after day one. I was in like 12th or 13th. I can't remember because I knew that day two, I'd make my money. Except I wasn't sure how that handstand hold would go. That was pretty nerve wracking. Yeah, the, 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 common, the common, you know, sort of wrench in the gears has been that handstand hold. I mean, a lot of people yeah. I was talking to just either they practiced it for a month, you know, a year and a half ago, or you know, they've just never done it before. It's just not a thing that they work on. Like they can walk, they can walk circles on their hands, like pirouettes up and over obstacles. But the moment you tell them to stand still, you know, was there a practice? Did, is that the one that you sort of like saw it announced and you spent two and a half days just on your hands? No, heck no. I knew I'd tire my shoulders out then. Um, <laughs> I mean, every once in a while, I would, a couple of times, not, uh, probably like once every two weeks, my coach will have me like accumulate like 30 seconds handstand hold, but that's like, moving around all over the place not really necessarily holding it in a four by four box but i do so much handstand push-up work um i think that translated over pretty well for that handstand hold it, it it was funny when when um i did it i thought everyone would be probably around like a minute and a half or so and then when i held it for a 132 i was just like hoping it'd be top 15 because i had no idea and then when they saw i got third it was a that was the biggest surprise of the weekend for me that one Dude, that's like that, that. That right there must have felt pretty money. I mean, at that point, yeah. the, the the stress kind of wears off. You're like, yeah, yeah. I know I'm going to crush Annie. So yeah, what oh, else yeah, is there? yeah, yeah. Uh, I knew it was a good feeling going into fourth, knowing it's my favorite workout. I knew I'd do pretty good in that one. Tell me a little bit about um, the experience of these like blocks, and you're kind of sequestered from you know your competitors. You don't really know what the scores are like. You're on the West Coast, so you know as you finish your blocks, you're getting your 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 scores generally. I mean, with a little bit yeah. of a delay based off of the, the leaderboard and stuff. But um, what was it like, like competing within that sort of blind situation, as opposed to having all your competitors there and knowing how you're doing? Yeah, that was that was like the most interesting part of the whole thing. Um, you get done. Well, even on it's, it's different, even in a workout. I mean, if I was going against those guys and let's say I'm, I'm ahead, I'm not going to finish super hard and just drain myself. But um, yeah. And all those workouts, you just had to give her the whole time all the way to the end. Cause you have no idea where everyone else is. And I mean, the only annoying part of this online thing, I'm sure everyone else will say it is that once you're done, I mean, any, I was like the last one to go. Once you're done, I still had to wait like an hour or two to know where I was. And that was annoying. It would have been really nerve wracking doing that last event and thinking I didn't do well on it and not yeah. knowing where I was going to place for a couple hours. Yeah, I, I spoke with Justin Adler uh, a day or two ago, and he mentioned yeah. that about how, you know, he was sharing scores with uh, a couple of his friends and okay. he <laughs> He uh he's in Montreal, so he has a couple hours before, you know, or he's a couple hours ahead. And uh -huh. so he had gotten like one of his friends, uh, Sam Cornoyer's score, and Sam had beaten him by like thirty seconds. And he was like, mm. "Oh my god! Like I have no chance of making it." Like Sam crushed it, and he didn't realize like you know Sam was like the second fastest, the third fastest time or yeah. whatever. But you know, there's yeah, there is that yeah, there's like that nerve wracking moment of waiting. You know, did you have like a like how did how did you deal with that that gap that like two hour gap after you're done with Annie and you're like okay the the event the event's over but the leaderboard isn't updating for another couple hours. Shoot, um, I don't even remember what I did between there. I just I had a whole group kind of with me the whole weekend and we were just kind of watching the update studio stuff for an hour and I just went in the house and I think I might have played a card game or two just to get my mind off of it, but. I honestly don't remember what was going on for those couple hours because that was that was definitely nerve wracking just waiting. Yeah. So how did you how did you you know get your mind right, turn it around, and get yourself in the right position to sort of 
utilize these few weeks because I mean the stage two is coming up in like two weeks. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's kind of weird for the mindset. Um, it's like I just did a really big competition, <clears throat> and my body's like, okay, you can like chill out a little bit, you can rest because you just did good in the competition. But it's like, no, I got to flip the switch again and try to get myself psyched up and mentally prepared for this next stage, which honestly hasn't been too bad because there's a good shot. I mean, I'm gunning for the podium and there's no reason I shouldn't be on it. <clears throat> and that's just kind of been my mentality and it's helped me. Um, it's going to help me in these couple of weeks because my CNS, CNS system was definitely pretty shot for the week after the games, but it's, I'm feeling pretty good now and doing well. Yeah. And Layton's keeping you busy too. A lot of active recovery with this guy. Dude, he does not stop. I'm not, he's the one jumping and doing his own thing. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Like father, like son, man. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Shoot, uh, I wish I had as much energy as him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the idea of, you know, trying to maximize some sort of fitness during this couple of weeks, I think is probably flawed. It's probably more like make sure your mind's right and make sure your body's not destroyed. Yeah. And uh, along with that, I should have mentioned, I mean, my training's totally different now it's kind of back to how it was training for aroma, swimming, running and biking and doing all the fun stuff. Except yeah, so you, getting ready for some hill runs. It's not, you get to get outside, live inside of the yeah. ruck for a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So much fun. Yeah. I can imagine. Is, yeah. Uh, yeah, man. So, you know, I think, I think this is, this is far and away your best performance at the game. Even if you were to take fifth overall, it's yep. the best performance at the games. The first time you've been in the top five, um, like you said, it, it really is anybody's shot to get onto the podium here. You know, what, what is it you want to see show up? I won't ask you what you don't want to see. Like, let's not, let's not jinx it, but what do you want to see show up? Uh, I want to see a bunch of odd object stuff. Um, I don't know. Kind of like, it, I want it to be like the ranch feel kind of, kind of feeling. Um, it's a hard question. I honestly haven't thought about it too much. What, what I think would be sick if we had some kind of mountain biking there which we definitely, I think, could, or some type of, like, uh, triathlon thing. Because um, I know there's water, like, half an hour away. Yeah. I guess it's not that close, but... I mean, I it's think close enough really to be cool. an aggressive bike ride to go from yeah. the ocean back to the ranch. Shoot. Like, that would be a pretty gross bike ride. Oh, uh, yeah, that'd be... Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not. Let's not, let's, let's not put that into the universe. How about that? Yeah, let's not tell no one that. <laughs> Just bleep that out. Bleep that whole, that whole conversation out. This is, this is a cool opportunity because you have like everybody's eyeballs on you. Yeah. Being in the top five. Um, do you have like, you know, are you, are, you gonna, are you thinking about that in terms of, you know, leaving an impression with people who may not be familiar with what you've got, like since they're all going to be watching? Oh, yeah. I think, uh, I think people would be surprised. I mean, if they don't know really who I am. I mean, I definitely planning on showing them who I am when I am there. Um, I'm super excited about the, just the five people being in there because um, I think they could totally do some stuff that they haven't been able to do in the past and maybe some more uh, technical skill stuff that has been harder to judge, like ring handstand pushes or something like that. So I think we just have so many more options um, with just the five people being there. So I think it's going to be cool. I'm, ex I'm looking forward to it. Fantastic, man. Well, listen, man. I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you get back to trying to chase this baby down because he seems like he's ready to get after it. Yeah. Uh, hey, sorry it, about that, <laughs> dude. It really. It's no, no. I, 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 I appreciate all the time that you can give me, and uh, you know, I, I, I really am looking forward to watching you compete. Um, if people don't know, by the way, they should go back and watch you do DT because it oh, was. Oh yeah, heck yeah. It was a fierce, fierce performance. Yeah, that was, that was a fun one. Let's do uh, that one again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, what do I want to see? Well, I don't know. The one that I won? How about that? Yeah, exactly. That show up again. Heck yeah. Oh, man. So uh, what's the best way for people to follow you? Like, do you, do, do you want people to, like, get in our Instagram or what? Yeah, Instagram. Uh, Samuel Quant. Just, that's it. Super easy. I yep. dig it, dude. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time, man. Good luck out there. Yeah. Hey, thanks. Appreciate it.